Hi, my name is Robin Bremer, and you're watching Walks with God. And today, we are going to continue on our series on bringing revival to America, or your country, city, or state, by <clears throat> referring to my book, um, Feed My People Joy, Kingdom Living for End Times, and uh, the Kingdom of God is Righteousness, Peace, and Joy in the Holy Spirit. And that's what this book is about, is having joy. Uh, joy trickles down to all those things. So today we're actually covering the chapter on, um, I don't know what chapter it actually is, chapter 14. Healing is, oops, healing is always the kingdom way. And we're going to, this is part two on wrong believing or hindrances or religious thinking that prevents you from receiving your healing. And this is major, major. Um, healing is past, we receive healing when we die. That's wrong believing. The truth is, if healing is passed, then the name of Jesus would not work for salvation or anything else. The name of Jesus is just as powerful today as it was when he walked the earth. How do you explain the millions of people that have been healed today, tomorrow? I lay hands on people and they're healed. Therefore, okay, I'm sorry, there'll be no devil in heaven. Therefore, there'll be no sickness. And Jesus took all our sickness and diseases so we could receive healing now on earth, not after we die. Of course, after we die, we have the ultimate healing because we're in heaven with Jesus. We have the ultimate salvation, the ultimate everything. But Jesus took his stripes on his back for our healing on the earth. Let's go over um, some scriptures here. Uh, Hebrews 13.8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Um, he went about healing all that were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Okay, that's Acts 10, 38, um, 3 John 1 and 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. So, you see, <clears throat> healing is not past. Healing is for today. Um, we are the body of Jesus on the earth today, the flesh that Jesus lives in. Um, his, the Holy Spirit, as Jesus' representative, lives in us. We are like a taxi driver for God. Our body this is what God, the revelation God gave to me today while I was praying. Our body is like a taxi driver for the Holy Spirit. Where we go, He goes. So we should wake up in the morning and say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. Where do you want me to take you today? And then you go there and you lay hands on the sick. You raise the dead. You cast out demons. Because the Holy Spirit is in you. Okay? Anyway, uh, wrong believing on healing. God is testing me. The truth is, the word tested and tempted are the same Greek word. The devil is called the tempter. Not God, not Jesus, not the Holy Spirit. Scripture is Luke 4, 2. Jesus being tempted or tested for 40 days by the devil. So Satan is the tempter and the tester. He's testing you to see if the word that you just received, if you really, really believe it, he's putting circumstances in your life that tries to dis prove and put doubt on God's word. God does not give you this great revelation about his word and then put a some put like if he says I by the stripes I I healed you, gives you a teaching, you hear an awesome teaching at church and then you go home and you get sick so that you can apply that principle. That's not that's not God doing it. That's not how God God does not test you or teach you that way. That is the devil trying to throw doubt your way so you don't believe God. Let's read some more scripture. In 1 Corinthians 3.20, the Lord knows our thoughts. And um, in, the parable, in the parable of the sower, there's two groups of people, and one of them fall away because of testing. And the testing is what, Jesus, uh, is what Satan does, because Satan's trying to make you doubt the, that God's word is true. And the purpose of testing is to cause you to doubt the integrity of God's word. Um... Luke 3, 8, um, the, those who believe for a while, have no root and believe for a while, and in a time of temptation, fall away, okay? And James 2, 13 says, let no man say when I'm tempted of God, that I'm tempted of God, for God cannot tempt anyone by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone, okay? Next one, wrong believing about Paul's thorn in the flesh. The truth in the scripture is the thorn in the flesh is mentioned two other places in the Bible. Um, Numbers 3.55 and Judge, Judges 2.3. And also look at Col Colossians 12.7. Um, the meaning is like saying, you are such a pain in the neck. Okay, well in their day they said, you are a thorn, and you are a thorn in my side. 
you are a thorn in my eyes. You know, those are slang, things that they said back in those days. And it says here that uh, the, the messenger sent to buffet him, buffet means hit over and over. And why was it sent uh, to buffet Paul, hit him over and over? Uh, because of the revelation that he received from God. Now, God doesn't, God is not, the more you know God, the more ridiculous some of this stuff is. Just like if I told you about my husband, I would get upset with you if you thought that my husband gave you a present and, and then he thought, well, that present is too big for her. I'm going to, I'm going to keep beating her up and beating her up till I can take it away. It's kind of what you say about God when you say that um, he gives you revelation knowledge and then he, then he beats you up. Okay, the messenger was sent to buffet him because God gave him such great revelation that the devil was trying to steal it from him by hitting him over and over. And he asked God three times to remove it from him. And God says, no, my grace is sufficient for you. You know why he said that? Because his grace gave you all power, authority, and dominion on this earth. And you are supposed to take authority and power and dominion over everything that is not from God. You don't say, God, just like Paul did. He said, God, take this away from me. No, he was supposed to say, in Jesus' name, I command this buffeting to stop. Okay? He wasn't saying, I'm not taking it away from him. He said, you have the power. I gave the power to you to take it away from you. Okay? His grace was is sufficient. Use the grace. Grace is undeserved favor. It's God's willingness to use his power and wisdom toward us. And he gave us abundant grace, and we aren't using it. He told you to resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Okay, we're not told to ask God to do it, but we're told to take authority. Okay? Wrong believing, thanking God for everything. Be content whatever stage I'm in, whatever con uh, state I'm in. Ephesians 5.20 and 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Now, those are scriptures that you can check out, but this is the truth. If I reached into your pocket, let's say your name is Joe, and I reached into Joe's pocket, took out a $5 bill, and um, handed it to Frank, would they say, thank you, Robin, to me? It wasn't my money. It was the other person's money. So my point being that if God gives you something, you thank God for it. But if the devil gives you something, don't thank God for it. If the devil gives you sicknesses and diseases, don't say, God, you gave me the sickness and this disease, so I'm going to keep it. First of all, God doesn't give sickness and diseases. So you don't thank him for it. The devil gave it to you. You say, thank you, Father. By the stripes of Jesus, I have been healed of this sickness and of this disease. Okay, wrong believing, and, I, and we're running out of time. We're not going to get to do this couple. Um, let's see. Oh, um, wrong believing, God is sovereign. He can do whatever he wants. Mm. You know what? I'm going to have to stop right here because that's a really pet peeve of mine that people think that God can do anything he wants because he made certain rules and he abides by those rules. So you're going to have to wait to uh, part Three, because that is such a big thing and I want to show you a lot of scriptures on that one so in part three we're going to go over that and uh, actually that's the last one and it's got two and a half pages here so um, that'll be on the next part three so my name is Robin Bremer and you're watching Walks with God and that's it for today